Welcome back. We're at a fairly key moment of the project. The car has been completely stripped of all its internal combustion engine components. So it gives us a really good understanding of what we've got to work with. So by that it will mean obviously the engine gearbox, the fuel tank, fuel lines, all of that kind of stuff. So we're completely clear, empty shell, it's definitely not going to run on petrol again. That said, everything is reversible. So if the customer really wants to go back to petrol rather than back to the future, then he certainly can do, and we can make that happen for him. But I think once he goes electric, he's not going back anywhere, to be quite frank. Anything to add to that? Uh, the interior, our upholster has taken the seats away to get them repadded, and the seat heaters fit to them. So uh, he'll bring that back in a week or two when he's finished. Yep. Um, but he's also um, fixing uh, some of the cracks and the damage that, came, that the car came with on the seats. It's surprising actually, the, the car's only done like 18,000 miles, not kilometres. Um, and the interior is in reasonably good condition, but it's still, what, 40 odd years old or thereabouts. So it's already had a life and obviously needs to be refreshed. And it's a good opportunity for, um, for us to take this vehicle and address any cosmetic issues it's got, potentially make it more comfortable, insert some bolster and all of that kind of stuff. So it's just a bit more easier and more comfortable to live with, especially given this thing's gonna be um, a bit of a monster on the road and it's gonna handle a whole lot better, so the customer needs that bit of uh, support. Okay, so here we have the old power plant that's come out and never to run again. Apparently these are quite desirable, so the owner's already sold this before it even left the car. But this is the Tesla small drive unit. You can see the drive shafts, that that'll, this will be oriented towards the front of the car. Um, so the, the secret source in this would be the mounting, the positioning, and getting the drive shafts at the right angles and uh, fabricated uh, to uh, work optimally, uh, centrally and evenly. Top down view of the engine bay, it looks like there's a real amount of room, but really there isn't. The small drive unit from the Tesla isn't small at all, if we're perfectly honest. It's quite expansive. I know the customer wanted to go large drive unit, but we knew like straight away without even pulling it apart, we knew it wasn't gonna fit. Um, there's a large cradle within the engine bay. That's obviously part of the original load as the LAN chassis, which means obviously we can't really change that or chop it or whatever as, as much as we'd want to. This will be a pretty full engine by the time we've got the small drive unit in inserted and the drive shafts connected and all of that kind of good stuff. That said, we'll still look at uh, inserting some of the batteries in here. We're looking at 60-40 split uh, with the batteries to give us that bit of that better weight distribution it should make a hell of a difference to the handling as we've talked at length previously. So there's nothing to see here, literally. Uh, empty space above apart from the cross member. There looks like there's lots and lots of space, but it's quite awkward. Lots of volume, but awkward spaces and lots of angles, uh, lots of triangles bizarrely. Um, so if you want to come under with me, you'll be able to see that we've got uh, a cross member here with a, a, essentially a V. So the uh, drive motor, the drive unit will sit obviously facing, facing forward. We'll end up with uh, a number of batteries in, in this triangular area here, uh, ahead of the unit. Uh, and then, uh, and if we look up here, you can see how little clearance we've got uh, to get the Tesla drive unit um, sandwiched in between this, this whole arrangement. Um, it's very, very tight indeed. Although the motor is, is considerably smaller than the original engine, the, the clearance that we've got to get the drive shafts onto the hubs is, is actually quite small. Um, there's only probably 10, 15 mil clearance for the drive shafts to clear the, the, this, this um, subframe um, assembly. Uh, so, and then we've still got to get obviously the motor kind of orientated properly. Um, and, and work with the mount that Tesla have so kindly donated with the crashed vehicle. It will work, but it is surprisingly tight for this application. You'll see we've got another triangle. Uh, I'm sure there's a technical term from the Lotus boys in terms of how this is all set up, but essentially you've got another triangle here 
which will be able to fit some batteries obviously um, fairly high up so away from any risk of damage or impact uh, and then we've also got some additional space up in the luggage area uh, front fruit uh, which we'll be able to uh, distribute some batteries up there and then so that means that um, we'll end up having to uh, distribute uh, the BMS systems and um, uh, signal wiring and all that kind of thing between the different ba different battery areas uh, and it looks like we're going to end up with essentially three battery boxes for this unit as well uh, which is a bit of a shame we're hoping to get away with two uh, but unfortunately the way it's all set up here and the way it's kind of awkward um, we're going to end up fabricating uh, three battery boxes but that's fine um, we'll get on and do it and, and basically just make it happen uh, and interestingly this is where the fuel tank used to be so again fuel tanks in, in my head are always you know rectangular shaped really interesting to get it out and have a look at it and made out of ABS plastic so yeah look um, and as, as I said we'll, we'll get we'll get this place utilized and filled up with batteries instead of the back instead of the petrol tank but most unusual to see a, a tank of that, that, that shape in the vehicle. So another aspect of um, removing the the old um, combustion engine was uh, it had to be cooled so it had a radiator at the front so originally the the engine here had uh, cooling pots through the whole system, so if you followed me this way, it'd go all the way through, all the way around, and all the way up to the front here. Um, interestingly, interestingly, the uh, radiator was connected, um, actually, uh, it was actually bolted to the uh, air conditioning condenser, so we've got to refabricate the air conditioning system as well now, so to make that live in this home where it was previously. So what's next? Uh, actually, well, what is next? Boxes? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, if you've listened to any of the live streams that we've done for EV Alliance, I always talk about the battery boxes, 60% of any build, and it's no different with this, actually. It's pretty awkward, like I said. Um, the, if, actually, that word isn't overused in this video. <laughs> the, the sp interestingly, this will be bespoke. This yeah. will be triangular battery box, something else, another battery box up here above it and then whatever fits above the Tesla drive unit. Yep. So there's a lot of measuring and refitting and boxes in and out and cardboard boxes and then all sorts of stuff happening. Mocking up the Tesla motor to fit the rear, it, for me, will be relatively straightforward. Uh, mostly because I won't be doing it. Uh, but but, um, uh, but the, the boxes will be the, 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 the pain or the overhead and labour intensive to get those absolutely right and obviously to make sure that they're, they're, they're insecure can we stand the 20G which we need to um, uh, uh, support and then also satisfy the engineers that we're doing the right thing as well. So uh, that's for next time. So next time essentially you'll see the motor go in, you'll see the batteries being mocked up uh, and hopefully the batteries going in as well. So uh, stay tuned as they used to say in the old days uh, but otherwise well, you know what to do. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more of this, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And also check out our sponsors who make all this possible. Without them, we wouldn't be here doing this. Many thanks. See you soon.